Good morning. Uh, welcome to ETF's webinar on vocational learning at a distance, supporting vocational teachers uh, under the lockdown. I'm delighted you can all join us this morning. I'm looking forward to discussion with lots of experience from around the world. Um, can I say, first of all, that you should check uh, and choose your language. At the bottom of the screen, in the middle, there's an option to select your language. Uh, and you can either select um, the, the language people are speaking in, or you can select uh, English, uh, Russian, uh, Arabic, or French. So please check your language. Once you've chosen your language, you will then find that you receive a translation into that language, and also the slides should be in that language. They won't always be in that language because we haven't been able to translate all of them, but most of them should be in your chosen language. And also you can chat uh, in your own language and it will be translated uh, for everyone else to see. So please, first of all, uh, choose your own language. Um, you may like also to introduce yourselves um, through the chat saying who you are, um, just just in order to that, that that people know who you are and we can see um, where you are. So please say your name and, and where, where you're joining us from. That would be really great. Um, I'd like um, uh, this morning just to say a couple of words about why, we, why we've chosen this subject. Um, I mean, uh, everyone is impressed by what's been going on in, in the way that education is coping with the lockdown. Um, uh, and people are impressed at the, the way new technologies have been used. But what we want to focus on today is, is teachers and the way in particular teachers have been at the centre of things and the way they've responded or the challenges that they've had and, and how they can best be supported. This seems to be a topic from the communications ETF is having with people, which is extremely important. Uh, and there's a recognition that, that teachers are critical uh, in this area. Um, now, ETF is, is, is actually have a whole program of, of responses to, to COVID-19. And you've probably seen that we have a series of mapping reports which have been published on ETF Open Space. Um, that's our ETF's platform. Uh, we've also had a series of interviews and stories uh, with, with business people, with teachers, uh, with learners um, from across ETF partner countries which have been broadcast on ETF Facebook Live. And we've also had uh, a previous webinar on assessment and today's webinar. And in the future, there will be um, more um, events online um, to support people in coping with COVID-19. Um, the hashtag Learning Connects is, is, our, is, is our place where you can find out and join the, join the conversation. So please, if you like, tweet, tweet on that and, and follow the conversation on that. Um, so... As I said, um, the, 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 the really striking thing is how quickly uh, schools and teachers and educational managers have responded to the crisis. Um, really, it's been a matter of, of eight weeks uh, in which traditional classroom teaching and learning has been transformed into digital distance learning. It really is an extraordinary achievement, particularly when you think how often uh, how slowly uh, educational reform proceeds. Um, today, uh, teachers have learned how to teach on video, um, how to organize virtual classrooms, um, how to coordinate uh, WhatsApp discussion groups. Um, many teachers have learned more in, in eight weeks than they have in the last two years. And not only have they learned these new skills, but they're actually putting them into practice day after day. Um, However, we, we need to be a little bit cautious because we estimate that maybe 50% of teachers do not yet know, have not yet learned how to do digital distance learning. Um, and we also know that many learners, maybe an even greater percentage of learners, are not participating. So the content is being broadcast or being sent, uh, but the learners are not motivated or not able to, to learn. So there's an issue there, perhaps, about the, the, the quality, about the pedagogy. Um, and we also know that the coverage is, is not even. Um, for example, there is far more digital distance learning for general subjects, for academic subjects, th than there are for vocational subjects. 
uh, and consequently uh, vocational teachers are not learning so much and consequently vocational learners um, are often not always but often being 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 left out um, what can we learn today um, well our focus is is on a number of things on which I think we can particularly learn from one another and we've invited um, uh, nine speakers to to join us today to share their experiences and to share what what they've learned uh, and in particular we want to learn about how we can train uh, and encourage teachers um, to start using uh, digital distance learning uh, we want to know how we can support teachers because it's not just a question of giving them new skills. It is also a question of encouraging them and solving their problems so they can gain confidence uh, and improve their, their online teaching. We, we also want to reflect upon what is special about vocational teachers and vocational subjects so we can understand what special training or special support or special technologies are needed to help vocational uh, education participate as well. Um, we want to look at what can be done by ministries uh, and national agencies, but also what can be done by schools uh, and, and by networks of teachers and schools. Uh, and we want to think how we can monitor what is going on uh, and therefore have an understanding of what is working well, what is working not so well and, and make improvements. Now, it may be that you can think of other questions um, and I'd like you please to add them to the chat as we go along, either immediately or, or in the course of the discussion. Because of course, one of the, one of the issues here is, is to try and find out what, what we need to know. We'll be addressing that today, but also into the future. Um, so let's see who we're gonna hear from. Um, so, um, we're going to start off looking at the level of national support. Uh, we're going to hear a couple of speakers, um, Artak uh, uh, Agabalian from, from Armenia and uh, Maria Jan Horta from, from Portugal. Then we're going to move on to look at the area of monitoring. And we're going to hear from um, Aijan Akhmetova and um, Nurit Beja um, from uh, Kazakhstan and from Israel. Then we're going to look at the level of schools and we're going to hear from um, Adrian uh, uh, Korozevici um, from Moldova and from Sigrid Esotani from Estonia. And, and, and then we're going to go on and look at the, the, the levels of networks and we're going to hear from Fation Dragoshi from Albania and Agris Rupert from and Inara Melne from, from Latvia. So we have a mixture of, of speakers from within the European Union and from outside the European Union and from a variety of countries. And of course, the, the practices, the, the, the solutions, the approaches vary uh, by country. Uh, and I think we've got a really interesting mixture of stories and experiences to, to share with you today. I'd like you very much, if, if you have questions to any of the speakers, to put them into the chat. Um, please signal if your question is addressed to a particular speaker so that we can channel it to that speaker. And after each section, we will, we will have an opportunity. We will pick out some questions and, 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 and put them to the speakers. Okay, so thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to hand over now to um, Artak, uh, and I'm going to invite Artak to um, talk to us about the support um, for teachers of vocational education in the Republic of Armenia. So, um, Italy um, to Armenia. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank European uh, Education uh, Foundation of for the support they rendering us uh, last years. My presentation will tell about the support to teachers of vocational education during uh, the crisis. Uh, in Armenia, the law defines two levels of qualification. Uh, the first, it's uh, a primary vocational uh, education with uh, the curriculum duration uh, from six months to three years. 
So that's a secondary vocational education. Uh, and the, the graduate gets the qualification of specialist. And we have also the secondary vocational uh, education, uh, which lasts uh, from two to uh, five years and uh, uh, the enrollment uh, is possible if uh, the uh, candidate uh, has uh, secondary or upper secondary uh, education. We have 69 colleges uh, that uh, teach uh, more than uh, 23,000 students uh, among them we have uh, 22 uh, uh, state-supported uh, vocational schools and uh, uh, colleges. And uh, no, we also have uh, uh, more than 3,000 uh, teachers. Uh, uh, the current list of uh, Professions and uh, qualifications include uh, uh, 112 uh, uh, occupations and 279 qualifications. Uh, currently, uh, the vocational uh, educational institutions uh, uh, train uh, for 59 uh, uh, craft trades and uh, 100 qualifications uh, are uh, taught for uh, secondary professional uh, education. Uh, uh, the um, emergency situation was declared in Armenia in the, the May the 17th and uh, lasts uh, till now. And uh, that raised the, the question uh, to arrange uh, the distant learning and to organize uh, um, governmental uh, support. So uh, we have organized trainings for directors and uh, teachers of uh, uh, vocational uh, schools and they were attended by 160 persons. And uh, we also currently uh, develop uh, guidelines uh, to introduce uh, distance uh, uh, learning uh, for vocational schools. Our main objective uh, in the development of uh, digital training was um, to check uh, the possibility to use educational uh, uh, technologies uh, to uh, update the skills uh, of teachers So, uh, what topics were covered by uh, those trainings for teachers? Uh, this is the development of uh, uh, distance education uh, strategy uh, to develop uh, learning and training materials uh, that will cover the required content, uh, methodology of uh, online uh, distance uh, learning, a selection of necessary resources and information technologies uh, to implement uh, uh, distant learning, uh, selection of target groups, uh, methods of to simulate uh, the uh, distance uh, uh, learning, and to, uh, tools, as well as uh, the mechanisms of assessment. One of the most important and the most complicated uh, issues is the practical training and development of practical skills. We also mm, discussed those topics uh, uh, during our uh, uh, trainings. And of course, uh, the final assessment uh, is of uh, paramount importance. So, uh, 
So, uh, you must understand that uh, uh, in this emergency situation, uh, not many items were covered by law. So, we, in addition to supporting our teachers and students as well, we have to introduce uh, uh, new uh, uh, paragraphs uh, into uh, laws and uh, bylaws that uh, govern uh, the educational system in our republic. Thank you. presentation. It's great to, to hear about um, what has been going on in Armenia, and I can see that there have been a whole range of, of, of responses. Thank you. Um, um, please do give us questions. I'm not going to put questions to Artak immediately because I want to save them up until after we've got a couple of speakers. Um, so I'm going to uh, carry on now, and it will there'll be a chance to um, answer uh, to put your questions to to Artak shortly. So um, the um, uh, the next speaker um, is uh, Maria uh, Jao Horta. Um, she's from Portugal. She's the uh, um, vice director of the um, the ministry of, the DG the DG Education Ministry of Education in Portugal. Uh, and I'm going to pass the floor to her now. So um, from ETF uh, Italy to uh, Portugal. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to first of all give you very briefly um, idea about uh, the organization of our educational system in Portugal, saying very briefly that uh, we have a centralized system, but in terms of uh, political and religious aspects, we are uh, neutral and the education is free uh, for all. So um, in Portugal, in terms of education, uh, we want to provide a common general background uh, and promote the education and culture of uh, excellence. Um, in terms of numbers, let me tell you that we have 12 years of compulsory education. Um, and uh, till, till the lower secondary uh, education level, uh, all the things that students learn are the same. So we put them in different schools just in the upper secondary level. Uh, and that's there where we have our vocational courses and we have our specific schools uh, for, um, for vet education. Um, so we have our system organized, uh, our uh, schools are organized in clusters uh, and we have all our youngest in school nowadays. Um, so in terms of percentage, we have more in general courses in upper secondary, but also um, the numbers of students in vocational uh, education is growing in Portugal. Um, when we speak about coronavirus pandemic that we are facing now, um, we announced the closure of schools in uh, 12th of March and the, the schools effectively closed on uh, uh, March 16. Um, and of course that we prepare a set of initiatives to support uh, the development of distance learning. Uh, generally, and very briefly again, I can uh, say that uh, we have two different phases. Uh, first of all, we organize uh, information, guidelines, we build a huge website with resources, guidelines, and we also produce new legislation uh, for the fact that schools are closed, but the uh, um, teachers uh, should continue working. Of course, that in the VET system it was much difficult, um, mainly in the end of uh, those courses because students should uh, do practical work in companies and companies most of all were closed. Um, but let me tell you that last week we reopened the upper secondary uh, schools. Uh, so the VET schools are now reopened since last week. Uh, I would like to underline uh, one of the initiatives that we had, and I'm going to speak a little bit uh, further in terms of uh, a large scale teacher training that we manage and we produce with uh, our open university. Uh, so these courses, a uh, huge course that we prepare, online course, um, for all the uh, 
headmasters and other leaderships, including um, teachers coming from vet schools. They work together with the others from upper, from all the schools uh, in Portugal. Um, and we prepared three teams in three weeks. That means that during three weeks, um, all this staff received uh, online training, uh, uh, three teams, three weeks. Uh, saying that the first one was about the guidelines for implementing digital distance uh, learning. Um, the second theme was about how to choose the right platform and also uh, issues connected with security in using those platforms. And the third theme about electronic activities for learning and digital assessment. It was mainly uh, asynchronous work um, we put uh, uh, several content inside the Moodle platform, um, so the, 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 the training was prepared in a self-training uh, 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 way of, uh, of uh, going deeper in these three themes. But in the end of each week, we have a synchronous session just to speak about the doubts and the main aspects that uh, uh, were put it in the uh, forums. So it was a very, very good experience because inside this training, uh, the headmasters and other leaderships, they could share different um, different uh, approaches um, about how to implement distance learning. At the same time, as I told you before, we produce some um, new guidelines and also new legislation. And we uh, install a system of monitoring uh, the work that the schools uh, are doing, uh, preparing questionnaires for all schools um, to be sure that all students uh, are at, at distance, of course, but working together with their own teachers. Um, so we also we also produce content for TV in a TV format, um, and we have um, a huge uh, channel on YouTube uh, with other resources to complement the 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 work that we are doing on uh, tv of course we know that uh, um, some families um, they don't have um, computers at home and some of them spe speci speci uh, specifically in rural uh, rural areas uh, so we began with a initiative student keep called student keep where with the uh, local municipalities with companies we are giving computers and uh, internet um, to those families so now we can say that we have all the families covered with the with the computers and internet uh, and uh, um, mainly um, in this in this uh, in this work that we are doing i think that we achieved what we want that is that all students uh, are not uh, being forget at uh, and the all school uh, schools are working uh, um, at uh, uh, by distance uh, and and for now uh, that's that's the thing that uh, i would like to to share with you thank you very much for this opportunity maria uh, thank you very much indeed that 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 was really interesting to hear that 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 presentation um i was particularly interested to hear that you've been providing support and training not only to teachers but also to head teachers uh, and it's very interesting, I think, to 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 see that in place, um, because it it, it it implies that there's some autonomy for the managers of schools, for head teachers, um, and and therefore they're not all giving the same support, they're not all demanding the same things of teachers, but nevertheless you're 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 helping to develop their professional capacity to make the right decisions and and to share with one another their different approaches and to explore. Um, what they're doing. Um, um, perhaps I could um, immediately uh, ask you a question which occurred to me while you were speaking. Um, I was struck by the fact that you said that different schools um, were using different systems and um, they were doing different, using different um, uh, distance learning systems uh, to support learning um, from their schools. 
Uh, now, I think that's an interesting approach, and I can see the, the, the case for it. But I suppose other countries have wanted to have a single a single system, a uniform system. They've used, you know, I don't know, um, Microsoft, or they, they've used it, um, you know, a particular system across the whole of their uh, their country. So I'd be interested if, 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 if you have found in Portugal that allowing schools to choose their own system, which suited them, whether that's created sort of more work um, to, to support teachers and develop skills or, or whether you feel that, that it's, it hasn't created more work. I mean, you know, how well you feel that, that that's worked. Um, if I can give the floor back to Portugal, please. Your question. Uh, I think it's a very interesting question. Um, and uh, I have to, to tell you that uh, we decided not to impose a specific platform. Why? Uh, because we uh, knew that um, our schools already uh, were using platforms before this crisis uh, and they were free to choose the, the best uh, platform that fits for the purpose uh, that they have in uh, in specific schools. Uh, so some of them were already using, for instance, Moodle platforms. Others are using the Microsoft tools like Teams, OneNote, uh, and so on. Others are using the Google Classroom. Others are using other kinds of, of um, of these of the platforms. So the, the thing that we provide was support for the use of these different platforms. So we did an agreement with uh, Microsoft to support schools who decided to use uh, the tools from Microsoft. We did an agreement with Google and they was they were supporting and they are supporting now schools that choose to use the Google Classroom. And we have already um, specific uh, uh, training centers doing support for the ones who uh, choose Moodle. Uh, again, why? Because uh, schools were uh, already used to use the a specific platform. Of course, that the problem is was and is that some of the teachers of those schools who didn't use it before. So that's why we did these agreements with these huge companies to support all teachers. Uh, but we didn't put this specifically inside the training that I uh, mentioned before, uh, because the training that I mentioned before was mainly for headmasters and other leaderships in, in terms of organizing the, the ecosystem of uh, different um, of dif different approaches of how to use and how to spread the use of platforms. So in Portugal, schools are free to choose their own ICT tools. Maria, thank you. And I think it's 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 very interesting to remind ourselves of how even in a crisis, uh, the kind of support uh, and the kind of process we follow has to fit in with you know how things work in that country uh what 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 the what the expectations are what the systems are in in that particular country now i'm i'm i'm, I'm not going to take another question now because we're a little bit behind on the time um, and i'm anxious to to move forward because we've got um uh, quite a lot more more speakers to go through um can i remind each speaker that they just have got six minutes um uh for for their presentation um, the, the next speaker is, is Aijan uh, Akhmetova, forgive me for my pronunciation. Uh, she's the director of the Department of Strategic Planning and Analysis uh, um, uh, in, in the Republic of Kazakhstan. So I'm handing the floor now to Kazakhstan. Good afternoon, co colleagues. I'm happy to be uh, here. I present uh, I represent uh, uh, the now Talop Center our organization is responsible for analytical and technical support of all teaching stuff or all organ uh, education organizations from 16th March well from the lockdown period well, when I mean, when Kazakhstan announced the state of emergency, all uh, educational uh, 
facilities switched to uh, distance learning and the state commission was established to ensure this uh, state uh, state of emergency uh, many providers gave their platforms free of charge uh, for the lockdown period to educational facilities in order to provide quality distance learning process the Ministry of Education together with our organization and uh, local authorities introduced monitoring of the educational process this monitoring uh, was being uh, uh, provided to first uh, monitor the quality of uh, a, a educational process, materials, assignments, uh, knowledge, skills, etc. So we have also provided the uh, m uh, the monitoring and covered a wide range of educational facilities in order to uh, control the level and evaluation of students' educational achievements uh, and the coverage of the training process itself. We have also monitored the uh, um, uh, access of uh, all students and teaching stuff to uh, computers to uh, or, or internet access this monitoring was very active uh, during the first month uh, of the uh, lockdown practically each day I'm trying to switch my slide, but I have difficulty switching my slide. So, as I said, the monitoring uh, was being provided each day. So, we also uh, conducted surveys uh, via phone and uh, emails we checked all the uh, materials and documentations uh, online after when it became clear that online education is on the good uh, track distance track so we uh, started to m monitor um, not each uh, day and as a result we have uh, also conducted a lot of um, surveys um, both of the teaching staff and uh, students we re uh, developed uh, guidelines uh, for the organization of uh, the training process during the pandemic we conduct uh, monitoring uh, system and intermediate final assessment of students Also prepared the uh, guidelines for conducted video or video lessons, prepared and uh, uh, preparing and uh, defending uh, term papers by students. Also, I'd like to underline that during the monitoring, we of course detected a lot of uh, problems, sometimes related to poor internet, sometimes to the lack of uh, um, computers and uh, we have uh, uh, we have done our best to address this problem in an, as soon as possible well by the way of conclusion so we have 
done a lot in terms of uh, monitoring and quick response to all the uh, problems to get rid all of all, all the hurdles in the uh, educational process of the, so that to have a smooth online educational process. Um, I think we may have had a, a technical problem in, in Kazakhstan because we, 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 we seem to have um, lost a picture there. Um, uh, I, I see that in front of me is, is, is the final slide, um, I think, for the, of the guidelines which, 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 which was used in, in, in Kazakhstan. Um, uh, I think you can see um, the, uh, how guidelines have been prepared. Um, for, for all the different stages of preparation, uh, conducting and, 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 and evaluating uh, academic performance. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get back to um, Kazakhstan. Um, and I'm not quite sure exactly um, how long their presentation is. W what I propose at the minute is that we move now to the next presentation, uh, and then if we've got a little bit of time later on, perhaps when we have a couple of questions, as part of the questions, um, Aizhan can, can um, add on any comments that, that we missed. So I'm going to um, uh, ask the, um, give the floor to uh, Nurit uh, Beja. Um, she is the uh, International Relations Director uh, um, for the uh, directory, uh, Deputy Director of Supervision, Knowledge and Management at MAHAT, the National Institute for, for Training in, in, in Technology and the Science at the Ministry of Labor, Social Affairs and Social Services in Israel. So I'm just going to, um, if I can... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to take us to the to the beginning of her presentation, and I'd now like, please, to give the floor to Ms. Nurjit uh, Berger in in Israel. First of all, my name is Nurit Berger, and uh, good morning to everyone. And uh, I'm very happy to be here and to learn from the to share the experience we gained through this uh, crisis. So uh, as uh, as uh, Julian introduced me, I'm in charge of the international uh, international relation in the in the Mahat. Mahat is the National Institute for Training in Technology and Science in Israel. Um, we have about thirty thousand students all over the countries. We have sixty one budgeted technological colleges. And we have about 23 major programs for practical engineers in different, uh, in different uh, uh, subjects like electricity and uh, civil engineering and so on. Um, now uh, I will continue. Okay, before the... Wait, it jumped, so we have to go back. Um, before the COVID-19, we almost had no use of distance digital teaching. For many years, there, were, there had been a lot of uh, talking about it, and uh, every organization, educational edu uh, organization, was intending to start using distance digital teaching, but it never really happened. The COVID-19 created the need for immediate response and the provision of uh, solutions for school, colleges, and universities. Uh, and it was the catalyst to advance the process of distance digital teaching and, uh, and learning. Um, okay. This, the first step we took was on the first week of shutting uh, of shutting down all the colleges, which was, I guess, at the same time all over the world. It was about uh, the middle of uh, of March, and with the help of outside experts on um, on distant. Uh, uh, digital teaching, we start providing 40 sessions of online basic training on digital teaching for college, 
lecturers and educators. The, after the, we, we gave them the basic tools and the method, methodology, uh, we went we went on to on to step two. Step two was after making sure of implement, implementation of basic tools, and we continued on uh, imparting advanced skills and wide range of of uh, different digital um, uh, digital uh, distance uh, teaching technologies. Uh, Professional, we have uh, professional inspectors on each subject of teaching and um, with combined experience. They have combined experience in pedagogy and professional knowledge and they were supporting the process of creating a professional teachers communities according to the different professional field of knowledge. Uh, and also they were generating in instructional materials for sharing and supporting professional teachers communities the other the actions we do we know that it's not enough to teach the the, the to, to give the teachers the tools but it is also very important to measure and to learn about the the quality and the effectiveness of this kind of methodology so what we did is that the uh, the professional inspectors were part are participating in zoom teaching at all colleges and they are uh, listening at least one class from each field and they are giving us a written report on their impression of the quality and the effectiveness of the teaching. Uh, also, we took some measures to estimate the quality uh, and the teaching uh, from data that we collected from the college's directors. Also, we collected data of students' participation, and we know that the approximate percentage of students using uh, or participating in those classes is about 70%. It's, it goes on and it's growing up, and the percent of teachers who are using it is about 40%. Um, what happened? Okay, I think that's it and thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Nurit. That's that's uh, re 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 really really uh, useful, and I I'm really struck and impressed by the fact that um, your inspectors were able to. Um, participate in, 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 in virtual lessons and carry out observation within a virtual environment because of course um, you know um, many education systems want to get inspectors to observe and uh, quality um, control lessons but of course in the real world that's very very difficult so in some ways the creation of virtual classrooms actually makes that that quality assurance process easier so I think that's a very exciting development, uh, very interesting, uh, and and perhaps interesting to 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 hear more about that. Um, a couple of questions then. Um, um, if I if I can start by um, coming back to first of all to um, Aijan, who who in Kazakhstan, who we cut off rather, um, but but perhaps I can come come back with a particular question to her. Um, uh, we would be interested. I've got a question from the floor. Interested to know. Um, what your monitoring shows about the the challenges that teachers experienced. I mean, does your monitoring show that they had technical problems or they had uh, pedagogic problems or, or, or um, I mean, what were the, the challenges that teachers were facing? Does, does your monitoring help us to understand that? Um, can I give the, the floor back to um, Kazakhstan? Спасибо за uh, вопрос. Uh, ну, во-первых, мониторинг uh, да, неготовность педагогов uh, к онлайн обучению это самый. So we're not ready 
first of all, for online learning, uh, especially for the first two weeks. Next problem to uh, uh, an analyze, find out all the problems that we need, how to record lessons, how to record through uh, 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 program, uh, through um, com computers with the help of which programs, which PO. And there were always problems of social and economic factors because in remote uh, areas there were no, there were a lot of technical problems, a lack of uh, um, uh, good internet, uh, high-speed internet, and even into the computers. Of course, there were problems related to, for example, how to teach physical training, for example. And also a lot of problems related to the measurement of uh, skills, the evaluation of uh, knowledge, and I think the most important uh, problem was of course the inability to conduct practical uh, practical le lessons practical classes so if well the pandemic continues we will have to face the problem face first of all the problems related to the practical classes thank you Thank, thank you, Arjan. That, that That's interesting to know. And I, I, I think the point about practical classes is, is an issue which has been raised uh, in some of our chats. And I wonder if I could um, come back to um, Nurit in Israel. Um, I mean, I know that there's been a particular focus there on, on post-16 engineering classes. I mean, I wonder if... Um, if the lecturers, if the college lecturers and the instructors were trying to teach any practical skills, uh, knew it, uh, in these video lessons, uh, I'd be interested to know if there were any demonstrations of practical skills and if you've got any feedback on how successful that was uh, from the point of view of the inspectors or from the point of view of the teachers or indeed f f from the learners. Uh, knew it, have you got, can you tell us anything about um, practical uh, distance teaching? Listen, teaching, and uh, we heard that this was very good. What the what the teachers did, most of them were using uh, in their uh, lecture. They were using uh, presentations which they allocated from the from the net, uh, which uh, demon demonstrates the uh, practical uh, practical lessons or issues. And uh, also, we uh, the final exam we have is a practical exam, and we managed to do some of the exams on uh, um, um, a distance, uh, on the, also on the on the with the zoom. The there were uh, the examinations took place and. Uh, everything was uh, like in uh, regular so we managed to uh, to gain a lot of knowledge and uh, experience with uh, with practical uh, teaching beside the regular teaching i hope that i answered your question Thank you. That's 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 actually really interesting, and I think it it opens up a bit of a world, doesn't it? Because as teachers grow in confidence uh, in their ability to teach at a distance and to use different technologies in combination, you know, they they will indeed be able to use video. Uh, they will be able to use existing video, or they will be able to make video, um, and therefore, in principle, they can communicate. They can show practice uh, remotely. Uh, but of course, they need the technology and they need the skills and they need the confidence to do that. And I guess these are the kind of things that your more advanced uh, training classes were, were indeed teaching them. 
Um, I want to move on now to the, the next section of our webinar. Um, we're now going to hear in, in detail from schools. Uh, and we're fortunate to um, have um, teachers from two different countries to, to talk about what has been going on at school level. So um, in a minute, I'm going to give the floor to Adrian um, uh, Korosevici. He's a teacher uh, at the Center of Excellence uh, in Informatics and Information Technologies, which is a specialist uh, center of excellence in Moldova. Um, so um, can I pass the floor now over to Moldova? Adrian. Thank you, Julian. Uh, good afternoon or good morning. Mm. Uh, to all the moderator and to all participants. Our educational center uh, for informatics and information uh, technology is uh, the uh, center for excellence uh, of, of the, the level three, four and five for professional uh, uh, training. Uh, plus, uh, we uh, offer uh, uh, continuous uh, learning, uh, uh, teachers uh, support, uh, um, guidelines and uh, um, other supporting material materials. Uh, uh, today we have uh, seven curricula for uh, to upgrade professional uh, skills, but um, uh, uh, Starting from March 10 to uh, May 15th, uh, uh, the emergency situation was uh, declared in our Republic due to COVID-19. And immediately after, our uh, administration, uh, in a very uh, short time, uh, developed a new uh, programs for uh, online education. Uh, we have used Moodle as uh, the uh, key uh, platform because we have already four years of experience to, of using Moodle. And uh, also our uh, teachers participated in uh, nine online uh, sessions of continuous vocational training uh, where they learned how to use uh, uh, distant uh, uh, learning. Uh, we have organized these sessions with Productica, uh, our partner. So we immediately uh, started to uh, provide uh, trainings how to use tools such as Zoom, uh, Google Meet, uh, Cisco WebEx, uh, and also our uh, uh, tools for uh, non-real time such as Viber, Facebook, Skype and email. Uh, cloud technologies, uh, Google Drive, YouTube, uh, Dropbox and classroom management tools. I already mentioned Moodle and also we used Classroom. Audio and video recordings uh, to create new uh, content and to download it to, to uh, YouTube, uh, such as uh, AirPower Rec, Loom and uh, 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 Vimeo. Uh, we uh, also uh, uh, drafted uh, electronic tests and digital questionnaires. Mm, support to teachers. We uh, uh, provided uh, uh, notebooks to those teachers who did require them. Uh, uh, also, uh, we allowed access to our lab uh, to record uh, uh, videos. And also, our government um, uh, asked mobile operators uh, to uh, provide free internet access to the t to teachers to facilitate the uh, distant learning uh, we made uh, some analysis uh, to find the pros and cons of distance learning 
Uh, among uh, the benefits of distance learning are the time flexibility, uh, easy access without traveling, a uh, wide uh, range of available uh, uh, disciplines, uh, uh, continuous update of contents, uh, uh, plus, uh, let's say, the uh, edu education, which does not depend on location. Uh, but uh, um, among cons uh, are the uh, strong motivation and self-discipline, uh, 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 technical errors, requirements uh, to uh, uh, technology and computer skills, um, As a conclusion, uh, I can say that uh, during this uh, transformation uh, period, uh, mm, it was difficult to give a, a clear indication how to use the technology, but uh, we are undertaking joint efforts uh, to strengthen the position uh, and uh, the value of this uh, uh, education and uh, we are very grateful to our European partners who support us uh, in this uh, respect. Well, uh, we have laid the foundation for uh, uh, distant learning, but still uh, we have a long way to go and we need to uh, uh, increase our efforts uh, to develop computer skills uh, both uh, for teachers and uh, for uh, uh, students uh, uh, to uh, reach uh, the good uh, uh, national and international level. Thank you. And back to Italy. I think that we're back in. Uh, we're back live again. I'm, I'm sorry for the interruption. I understand we now have a, a, a live connection. Um, uh, I, I really apologise for. for Centre of Excellence. It, it is a school where there has been investment, both in the hardware but also in the teachers. And I think it, it, it demonstrates that where there has been that preparation, um, where at national level uh, an effort has been made to build up a competence, um, then uh, a, a school like that can really have advantages in, 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 in tackling a crisis. Um, I'd like now, um, if, if I may, to um, um, hear about a different school. Uh, this is a school in, in, in Estonia. Um, I'm going to uh, give the floor in a minute to uh, Sigrid Esther Tani. Um, she's coordinator of work-based learning and projects at Tartu Vocational Education Centre in Estonia. 
Um, so can I give the floor now, please, to Estonia? Um, warm greetings from Estonia. Um, I, I hope the connection is working now. So really uh, quickly to go um, over uh, what we have done uh, similar to, uh, to other countries to cope with the crisis. Um, what, first of all, I'd like to mention that Estonia was in a slightly different position from maybe some of the other European nations. Because in our case, even in the, uh, uh, the quarantine and under the uh, emergency situation, most of the businesses have been keeping operating. And that meant that our students uh, have all also been able to continue with work-based learning. Uh, but of course, schools switched to distance training as in other countries. Another thing that puts us, I think, in a, in a slightly different position is we have had, uh, we, we have a uh, I, I keep hearing that there is no sound. Um, I hope you can hear me now. Um, I work in a school which is uh, Tartu Vocational Education Centre, which is the largest vocational school in Estonia. We have roughly under 3,000 students and about 250 teaching staff. Uh, in our school, uh, all the curricula are learning outcome based. And this is again a thing that helped us uh, to um, uh, adjust to distance learning because we do not center around the hours spent in the classroom but the learning outcomes achieved by the students. What of course makes distance learning difficult as pointed out by many colleagues online today is the, the practical studies in VET uh, which is very hard uh, to, uh, to make online unless you are teaching ICT. <laughs> Um, also, in our school, one of the biggest departments is ICT, and for them, I think the, um, the switch was easier than to some others. Um, uh, we had uh, several structures in place prior to the crisis that helped us to switch to online learning. And this is um, the, um, uh, the uh, planning of e-learning days or online learning days in the acad academic calendar of the school for past five years. Uh, last year, our teachers created Moodle hubs, which are curricula-based um, um, Moodle uh, collections of materials. Um, we have, uh, similar to, uh, to Moldova, had uh, uh, trainings for teachers already prior. Uh, to uh, this crisis situation carried out by our educational technologist who is a special teacher in the school uh, helping uh, with uh, digital tools, uh, mentoring colleagues, offering private consultations and, and uh, she has been of great help of course during the crisis as well. In addition to that we have um, an institute of master teachers which are are really pedagogical masters. We have four of them in our school and who, uh, who provide uh, different um, uh, guidance to colleagues and oversee the development uh, of pedagogical materials in the school as well. Uh, so 
of course, even if you have all the structures in, in place and you think you're ready, this is still a big leap for, for the teachers to take everything online. Um, and I think what helped kept keep the sanity a little bit was uh, continue some of the routines that we are used to, like weekly meetings within departments and within management using, uh, in our case, uh, Google G Suite, Google Meets um, uh, to, to quickly exchange information. Um, there was a, um, uh, first of all, uh, agreed communication channel with uh, the students and teachers, which is our intranet. Uh, that all the official communication that the school management needs to make to teachers or to students goes through one concrete ch uh, channel. And uh, the online teachers lounges that, that popped out, um, uh, uh, created by our master teachers, um, which um, this is an informal environment for teachers to, to communicate, to have your cup of coffee and, and ask a colleague for advice. Um, we shouldn't underestimate uh, the need to um, to have your the support of your colleague even at the uh, uh, working from home ho office. Um, as we uh, continued, of course, the the digital tools trainings weekly, which are now, are now online for for colleagues. Uh, but our educational technologists and master teachers all, of course offered individual consultations because uh, the problems uh, teachers encountered were different due to um, maybe the, the subjects they are teaching. Uh, the, the educational technologists quickly organized also a uh, collection of best practices in a Padlet so that if you tried a tool, found it useful, uh, share this experience. We also found very important to gather feedback from students and from colleagues after the first week of distance training. And that brought out that uh, the teachers were doing their job. There was no question about it. But that meant some of the students were overloaded with work. So after first week, um, really giving the feedback also to teachers that please consider that this is a hard challenge for the student uh, to manage all of this on their own um, without the, the help of, of the other students and teacher in the classroom. Um, and our HR department uh, published guidelines and organized webinars of how to work from home office. Um, also, the school psychologist uh, has been there not only for students who are struggling with the lockdown, but also for teachers, because um, we, we shouldn't really underestimate the, um, the impact this is having on, on people's mental health. So we've, we've found uh, those measures very, uh, very supportive and, uh, and good for staff as well. Um, what we think uh, is, is really key from the management point is to encourage your creative teachers uh, because teachers are, are fantastic. Um, they really pick up this challenge and they've become YouTubers um, making video tutorials uh, for students. As, as mentioned today, it's, um, uh, it's, it's really difficult to... Um, uh, do the practical training in VET. And in some subjects, it can be done. For example, our hospitality uh, teachers um, had the students serve breakfast at home to their family members and record that on video and, and make presentations of that and, um, and give feedback. We do encourage teachers not to grade at this point, but to give constructive feedback to their students. And, to help them really again to achieve these learning outcomes. We also, because our students uh, were able to go to companies for work-based learning, so in some cases we were able to reorganize the study plan so that instead of having a practical training in the school workshop, they could go to uh, their workplace to do the practical training and then we could use uh, interactive tools like Google Meet, uh, Zoom, to do uh, the assessment seminars of those periods of learning. Um, when we are looking to the future here in Estonia, we believe that uh, it will be uh, blended learning as a norm. 
meaning we um, will look more to uh, having distance and online learning and contact learning uh, as combined. We are doing this at the moment as of last week. Our students are back in school doing the practical training in the school workshops, but the theoretical subjects are online. So thank you from Estonia and uh, back to you, Turin. Sigrid and uh, Adrian, thank you very, very much indeed for that. Uh, for those two presentations, I must say, I, I putting the two together, I really found that inspirational. Um, it's marvelous to hear what you know what is going on at schools and and to see how schools can respond a, as organisations, whereby teachers are coming together to to experiment, to, to support, to 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 look after one another's well being. Uh, and so on, and I, I, I think that's a that's a, a really impressive impressive story. Um, we've got time, um, perhaps just 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 for one question. Um, maybe I, I can I can if if the internet will hold up, um, I can put one question to Adrian. Um, I mean, Adrian, you mentioned that the challenge of motivation that it is more difficult for both teachers and learners to be motivated to to to. Um, to work remotely, I don't know. I wonder whether any of the any of the um, suggestions that we just heard from Estonia, whether you thought any of those sorts of approaches were things you were already doing in in Moldova, or wh whether they could have a relevance for for Moldova. Um, can I give the floor, please, to Adrian? Uh, 
it, 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 it looks as though um, Adrian is, is, is not able to hear us because although we gave a, a question to him, he, he didn't seem to be able to hear what we were saying. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm sorry about the, the interruptions. We haven't, you know, we've had a, a fairly successful webinar so far. and We just had a few interruptions now. I, 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 I cannot possibly explain it. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to the final uh, part of our webinar where we look at the, the contribution of networks. We've heard about what, what, what ministries and what agencies are doing. Uh, we've also looked at what is going on at school level. But I want to look at network level, and that's where groups of schools um, support one another. It's a kind of midway uh, between what, what, what comes from the centre and what comes from the bottom. And I want to explain how, you know, what that can add uh, to the, the 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 two the two the two extremes. So I'm going to uh, invite um, uh, Fatian uh, Dragoshi to, to to talk to us. Um, he is a, a project manager. He is the project manager of Skills for Jobs, which is a, a large project involving a, a large number of schools in Albania. Um, it's um, implemented by Swiss Contact. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to give the floor, please, to Fatian in in Albania. Thank you, uh, Julian. Uh, greetings to all. Um, in fact, while listening to the presentations of the other uh, colleagues, it became kind of difficult to, to figure out myself what is a niche, so to say, or something uh, unique that we could present here. But it's also reassuring to, to see and understand that most of the measures that we are undertaking here in Albania in the framework of Skills for Jobs project supporting uh, nine schools, uh, vocational education uh, schools and training and one training center actually are rather similar and, and embracing the whole, uh, the whole uh, picture. But uh, just briefly to, to mention you, uh, to mention a few elements in our project, we uh, have um, a very strong component in promoting blended learning uh, as part of what we call uh, new ways of learning. This was uh, an initiative that we started about three or four years ago. And I'm mentioning this because it's important to emphasize the fact that what I will be talking about uh, in a minute is based on the assumption that uh, as a project uh, with teachers and, and instructors and principals, we have been investing ourselves into promoting online learning. In that sense, uh, the pandemic somehow found us half prepared to, to manage this difficult situation. I'm not going into to the details, but this presentation has a lot of information which you could use for a reference in the future, but today I will have to stick to the time frame given. Uh, <clears throat> we have developed, uh, uh, four years ago, we developed a framework in supporting teachers and uh, education institutions in, in uh, from different vocation professions to uh, promote uh, blended learning and as part of that online learning. And what you see in the presentation uh, in this slide, you see uh, six different elements. The most important uh, one uh, that is relevant to our discussion today is the online uh, learning um, platform, the virtual learning environment, so to say. And based on that, we have um, been investing ourselves heavily in the last 10 or 11 weeks to uh, support and capacitate teachers uh, into um, utilizing, so to say, this virtual learning environment in the situation of uh, a total lockdown as we have seen in Albania. Um, if uh, <clears throat> I try to summarize uh, some of the support measures that we have provided, as I mentioned, they are pretty similar with what other uh, countries and experiences were shared uh, this morning. But what I uh, would like to emphasize, and also it's somehow the, the topic of our subchapter in this presentation, is communities of practice. Because we work directly with nine vocational education uh, schools, we have the chance and the richness, so to say, to um, help teachers to benefit from one another as they are going through this experience. And to that end, there have been uh, numerous uh, webinars uh, where teachers 
were presenting their experiences and they were um, sharing the challenges that they were facing and providing one another with a lot of advice. This resulted to be the best measure uh, and the most efficient one we could undertake as a project because we were told, literally, today we were told that in two days time we have to uh, go uh, in our homes and we could only do as much, so to say, remotely. But it has proven to be very successful because human nature has it that we as species are very adaptable. So teachers and students and principals have been coping very well with um, the, the, the new reality, so to say. But uh, what we find uh, very inspiring is the fact that teachers now find uh, time and they, they have very uh, good uh, inputs and contributions to share with one another. Um, we have been uh, focusing on, on uh, topics such as how to uh, manage an, a virtual learning environment, what does that mean, uh, what, what remote learning and distance learning mean in terms of pedagogical uh, aspects and methodologies of teaching, how to um, interact with students, how to become for real now the facilitator uh, of, a, of a community, how to provide constructive feedback. A lot has been uh, talked about how to become a bit more flexible when looking at the frame curricula and the school-based curricula, how to uh, make sure that uh, you take care of the, the uh, uh, mental health, uh, if you want, or the, the emotional uh, state of uh, the learners, uh, many of them being faced also with a lot of uncertainty in their families in terms of economic conditions and uh, uh, subsistence and so on and so forth. Um, Promoting a virtual learning environment, we use a, a Moodle-based one uh, in Albania for various reasons. It's not uh, a topic for today, but using the platform has been uh, key in the first few weeks. Uh, and after uh, people started to get a bit familiar with it, then we focused more on pedagogical aspects. Now, I'll take two minutes to give you um, uh, more of a, a detailed uh, description, a bit of a process, how teachers uh, have worked with one another. It is a case that uh, it's founded on the uh, initiative uh, that we undertook to uh, develop and or adapt learning material that was designed for class basis now to uh, use it for an online uh, learning environment. So uh, we had uh, groups of teachers uh, created uh, based on subjects. They were somehow promoted by us, but then they also continued pretty soon actually to become independent. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this group of uh, peers would decide on what materials were needed uh, always going into um, a quick analysis, what is the minimum requirement? So what do we really need? What is emergency? So we invest in, in that. And then they would distribute tasks. What we uh, contributed concretely was then technical assistance uh, to support uh, these teachers into adapt or develop the learning materials. Uh, these learning materials were then presented and uh, there was uh, back and forth from peers and that was for us somehow a quality assurance aspect and uh, only when that uh, feedback was reflected in the documents then we gave the green light so to say <clears throat> for this material to be made available in the virtual learning uh, platform we call it masovet it's interesting uh, uh, phrase it, it can be like learn vocational education training but it's also learn do it yourself and and that's how we we kind of promote it then among uh, among teachers and students uh, <clears throat> what 
teachers were doing then, not only those who were engaged in developing the materials, but also others who were teaching those subjects, they would uh, look it through and if they uh, um, saw it to be beneficial, then they would refer it to their students. And uh, uh, as materials were starting to be used, feedback was coming our way. And in that uh, moment, we uh, start uh, improving as much as we can uh, the material. Now, for us, it's very important to look forward. Uh, and for that, we are now uh, developing a, a conceptual framework, more like a position paper uh, built, designed uh, around some general assumptions that we have. And as uh, uh, Ingrid mentioned, in our understanding so far, blended learning, what we have been promoting for four years, and it didn't really fly before that, uh, blended learning is going to become the new norm. Because we will see in many situations during the upcoming academic year and the one after that, that we may not be able to physically be present in the school or to be um, uh, hosting less students in a the classroom, therefore, shifts could apply and so on and so forth so it is an exciting time very challenging uh, reality for sure but uh, we have started to, to focus now more our attention on the upcoming academic year to see how we can really help everyone to uh, to uh, prepare properly so we don't lose so much in the upcoming academic year it is very um, difficult to figure out how much we have lost in this academic year. But if we don't start preparing ourselves for the upcoming one, we may be losing a lot. And this may mean for some cohorts of students, uh, a distraction of two over or three academic years in a study cycle of about three or four years as we have them in Albania. This is my key message and uh, I would uh, like to uh, give now back the floor to Turin. Thank you. Fation, thank you very much indeed. Um, that's a terrific story you from down there in Albania. Um, I was particularly struck by the fact that you, as I understand it, you've been able to work across more than one school. So you've been able to put together teachers, uh, subject specialists from more than one school and working collectively, uh, you've been able to create uh, instructional materials to, to cover the curriculum, which is, which is quite an achievement, because I have to say that in many countries, it, it's been difficult to, to, to generate materials to populate the curriculum um, for this semester. So I think that is a, a merit of a, of a collaborative net, network approach. Um, I, we're, we're moving towards the end of the webinar now, um, I, um, we're, we're a few minutes late, but, but I, I, I'd like, if, if I can, to um, invite you to stay with us for a few more minutes. Um, and I'd like now to um, pass the floor to um, Latvia. Um, we've got some colleagues in, in, in Latvia who, who are going to um, talk to about another network, a network of, of vocational schools um, in, in, in Latvia. Um, and. Um, I'm going to start off um, with um, Agris Rupert, who, who, who um, is uh, a head teacher of, of, of a school, but, but also um, the uh, coordinator of, of, of the Vocational Schools Network. Uh, he's going to speak a bit, and then he's going to bring in a colleague who is a teacher, uh, Inara, who, who, who is a teacher of one of the schools in the network. So can I pass the floor now to um, Latvia? Uh, hello everyone, I hope everyone can hear me and uh, my name is Agris Rupert and I would like to exchange our experience uh, uh, of organizing uh, education, vocational education uh, process uh, in Latvia now under these circumstances and today I'm not going to talk as a director uh, of uh, Center of Vocational Competencies, but uh, I'm going to talk as a member of the board of uh, Association of uh, uh, Vet Schools. Uh, 
Okay, I can switch slides. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I should say that our association uh, is uh, working as a strategic partner of the Ministry of Education and Science uh, of Latvia since 2009. And uh, our uh, activities, maybe I should uh, um, mention as, uh, first of all, we take part in development of the strategic uh, of wet uh, learning and uh, training uh, here in Latvia. And uh, including development and uh, implementing wet strategy in Latvia. The next direction of our activities is uh, implementing partnerships uh, with other wet institutions, first of all on national and then also on Baltic and European and also on a worldwide uh, level. Uh, and uh, since lockdown, since this new situation, uh, we of course uh, work at the same uh, activity level, but uh, we had to start uh, to think about uh, changing uh, our uh, daily, let's say, methods and uh, working tools. Uh, since 12th of March, uh, the lockdown here in Latvia started and since that date we will have to provide uh, distance learning uh, without any preparation in advance. So it means that uh, till that uh, moment we are learning by doing. And first of all, within our network, which uh, unites 31 uh, members, vocational schools of Latvia, we uh, started uh, to share exper experience on organizing distance uh, education, first of all, on uh, headmaster's level, director's level, and then each director of each school spreads the same information and uh, gives uh, support uh, to the teachers how to work within uh, during this lockdown situation. Uh, of course, uh, we help each other to uh, develop normative documents and organize uh, schools operation systems uh, also, uh, uh, we uh, gave consultancies and also organized consultancies uh, for our uh, members of our network to promote faster problem solving at national level. And uh, one of the most important things we did during this period, as uh, some speakers before mentioned, uh, that vocational education and training has this uh, <clears throat> specific uh, that uh, we can provide uh, training in general subjects more or less uh, successfully use, uh, online, but it, it could be quite uh, challenging uh, to organize practical uh, trainings or practice for our students as well as work-based learning. Uh, it's very hard, but it's not uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, forbidden, not forbidden, but uh, forgotten, sorry. Uh, and uh, also as a network, we provide continuous mu mutual consultants, consultations on various, various uh, emergency issues including consultations on organization of final exams, which will start next week. And so we uh, have to think and to assist our members how to organize these final exams uh, in uh, schools. Of course, we're using, uh, we're using different uh, tools, how to exchange this experience and share our ideas and uh, experience. Uh, we have our WhatsApp group, uh, within our members uh, and also when this WhatsApp group uh, take par uh, takes part uh, representatives from uh, Ministry of Education and Science and other uh, institutions which are connected with our activities. Uh, we provide every second week online seminars using uh, Zoom platform or Microsoft Teams. Uh, so the next uh, online uh, seminar will uh, happen tomorrow. But of course, uh, it's very important from one side to organize such activities, but uh, the most important is to get back feedback uh, from uh, our colleagues, from our teachers, from our students, 
who are, uh, let's say, uh, our target group of our work. And now I would like to uh, give the floor to my colleague from another vocational uh, institution uh, on the opposite side uh, of Latvia, uh, to Inara Melne uh, from uh, Ogre Technical School, who is working as a teacher and she could uh, share her experience and her uh, I'm going to give some feedback about uh, the activities of uh, Association of uh, Vocational Education and Training uh, Schools of Latvia. Uh, Inara, the floor is yours. Thank you, Agris, and hello, dear audience. I'm going to give a short insight of the distance learning from the teacher's point of view. Uh, during the lockdown, the teachers working in vocational schools in Latvia have received a fundamental support from the Association of Wet Schools. Uh, for example, one of the uh, key factors was uh, uh, adjusted uh, timetables because there are now usually two subjects per day uh, which makes lesson planning more efficient uh, besides that the teachers of different subjects have tried to find some common points uh, in their programs and teach the corresponding uh, themes simultaneously uh, the teachers have al also found ways how to cooperate more and share their practices and resources. And this have led to revised guidelines for methodical materials, which help uh, to create uh, the kind of materials that can be easily adapted and uh, used by other teachers. Uh, apart from the mentioned points, uh, it has been crucial for many teachers to receive technical support as well, to be able to work from home. And it was also offered and provided by the association if necessary. Uh, furthermore, uh, moral support the teachers have received has uh, also been vital for our mental well-being. For example, simple emails or WhatsApp messages from the administration expressing gratitude has really helped the teachers to continue their good work. All in Um, I think that um, we, 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 we've lost um, Latvia. I, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. We, we, we were doing really, really well, but, but, but we, we seem to have lost them. Um, I, I was going to say what a, what, a, what a terrific story that is. And I think it's, it's interesting in both of those two cases to hear um, how there can be cooperation, both at the level of principals and the level of teachers, uh, in terms of technical um, assistance, in terms of content, but also importantly i think in terms of moral uh, support in terms of well-being and i think that's for me been one of the messages for this morning about the importance of of, of all educational professionals um supporting one another and finding that enthusiasm and motivation to to innovate and and to and to overcome difficulties um uh, we're very nearly at the at the end of our of our of our webinar now and i just really want to um bring the webinar to a close now. But before we, we finally close, um, I'd like to thank all of the uh, speakers who, who've given their time very generously to prepare their presentations uh, and to give them today. By the way, the presentations will all be available uh, on ETF's um, open space platform uh, in translation and, and, and in the uh, original languages. Um, so please, please take a look and, and download those presentations if, if you're interested. Um, but just a few sort of takeaways, because um, I myself am trying to improve my uh, ability as an online educator uh, and facilitator. 
uh, and I'm aware it's not enough for us just to talk. Um, and I'm interested now to see what, what your thoughts are, what, what your takeaways are, what, what you will remember um, from this webinar. Um, so I'd like you now, please, to use the chat to, to try and share with, with other participants at, at the webinar, um, both on, on YouTube and here uh, um, on, on uh, Voiceboxer. Um, have you got any feelings now? Have you got any thoughts about what can be done to enable more and more vocational teachers to contribute, um, to create materials, to teach, to support one another? Are the things which you've learned about today, uh, which which you see could be put into practice? So I'd like you to to look at these questions here on the screen in front of you. Uh, you don't need to answer all of them, but I'd like to see if you can maybe answer one, two, or even three of them in the chat to, to give me your responses now. Um, are there particular practices that you've heard about today, which perhaps in your country, in your school, uh, in your network could, could be used and could be spread more widely? Um, are there particular things that you've heard about from any of the countries, any, any of the speakers? Um, um, what about the monitoring? Um, uh, have you got any? Have you had any learning about what could be monitored, um, and about how that monitoring information could be used? So, if you have thoughts, please put put them in the chat. And then this last issue about the professionalism of, of teachers and managers and the resilience of learners. Um, we want them to be able to respond quite independently. Uh, in the current crisis, they sometimes have been a bit isolated. They've been working from home or, 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 or they haven't had contact with, with their normal associations. Um, they found ways of communicating, of, of making connections, of coming up with solutions. Some teachers, some managers have been leaders, have inspired and supported their colleagues. Uh, and the same for learners. I mean, there are cases of learners who have started uh, WhatsApp groups, who, who have themselves supported um, other learners. So I think it's an issue into the future about how we can build up the resilience and the professionalism of, of, of teachers um, so that they can cope with shocks uh, and they can innovate independently and in groups. And they're not always waiting to be told what to do if they can't do what they've done in the past. So I'd be very grateful to see your chats. I see there's some excellent ideas coming in there already. Um, so thank you very much for those ideas. Um, if you have any further ideas, um, please add them to the chat or add them on open open space or, or, or tweet them. Um, there's some, some interesting ideas coming up, so please do, do look across the chat. I'm not going to read them all out because we're, we're running out of time a bit, but I think it's interesting to see what, what, what colleagues are responding. Uh, and, and while that's going on, I'd just like to say that you can join us on Open Space. Uh, the, 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 the URL is there for further discussion and to learn about further events. And we um, anticipate there'll be further events about assessment, but also about teachers and teacher training. Um, uh, uh, but we need your feedback to know, you know what to focus on. Um, so please, please let us know. And there's a short uh, feedback questionnaire in, in all of the languages of the webinar. The, the links to those are, are, are being posted now on chat. So please take just a few minutes to fill in that questionnaire to let us know what worked. Um, can I apologize again for those of you who have experienced any technical uh, problems? Um, uh, I'm sorry about that. It's difficult. We're all still learning um, how to do this. But thank you for persisting, uh, for being patient. Uh, and normally the, the connection has restored and we've been able to continue uh, the webinar. So thank you very much indeed for your participation today. Um, and I look forward to meeting you shortly uh, at another webinar or online event. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to um, uh, hand back now to, oh, I will, we'll leave the chat running a little bit because there are still some good ideas coming in. But, but thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to hand the um, hand the uh, voice back, hand the hand the hand the um, voice back to um, the moderator in Italy.
Well, thank you very much indeed. It, it looks like I'm still broadcasting. Can I take this opportunity to, to thank um, all my colleagues at ETF who've helped to make this work, who've prepared it and done a colossal amount of work in getting this all to work, and our colleagues at Voiceboxer too. So thank you very much indeed, all of you. Can I wish you a really excellent uh, remainder of the day, uh, and I'm now going to close this, this webinar. Thank you very much for your participation.